good to see you all out there into the internet world. Welcome to In the Round with Tyler Tafoya. As always, I am your host, Tyler Tafoya. Fwam, 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 fwam. Joining me is my co-host, Miss Anna Ducci. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thanks for sticking around. Of course. You've made it. <laughs> out of the two shows today, we made it. Um, you guys, we're here. This is our second episode, and we're excited to announce we got a sponsor, Verb Energy Bars. Um, these are energy bars. Um, specifically, we have in the in our studio today the chocolate chip banana bread ones. Try them; they're pretty good. Um, if you go to our Instagram page, you will see a link to their website. You will get thirteen dollars off of your first purchase of samples that they will send you. They're pretty darn good. Check them out, Verb Energy. They are also on Instagram as well. We got a rip roaring good show for you, you guys. Um, it's going to be really awesome today. We are going to start off talking um, about a topic today, which is movie musicals. Because I don't know if you've noticed lately, we got a few of them coming out, um, and we are really excited about it. I think any time that musicals, musical theater gets onto the mainstream, you know, zeitgeist, uh, it, it excites me. I don't know about you, Anna. How about you? Yeah, definitely. It brings musicals to the light that not a lot of people usually get to see. So it's mm -hmm. it's nice to see it in the mainstream, like you were saying. It's true. I'm going to name off a few of them. Dear Evan Hansen's coming out. West Side Story, the Steven Spielberg remake of the classic movie is coming out soon. Uh, in the Heights coming out this summer. Super stoked for that. Uh, the show, the mo the show every everyone's talking about Jamie. Everybody's mm -hmm. talking about Jamie? Everyone's yes. talking about Jamie? That one. Jamie's coming to the big screen as well. <laughs> A new Cinderella starring Billy Porter as Fairy Godmother. What? What else do you need? Come on. And this is a very personal and exciting one for me. Uh, Tick, Tick, Boom. The um, never fully produced by Jonathan Larson, but he did it um, back in the day as a one-man show before he uh, created Rent. That is um, his one of his first babies, you know, as a writer growing up in New York City, trying to become a writer. Uh, he was about to turn 30 and f trying to figure out if he wanted a life in musical theater and as a writer of musical theater. And it's a very personal story. And as one, if you were a writer, you you it hits all the points for you. And you realize, oh, shoot, this is either going to be my life soon or it's my life now. So that's going to be directed by my boy, Lin-Manuel Miranda. And uh, it's going to start... Pretty big name, Andrew Garfield, as Jonathan Larson, which is pretty awesome. So I'm excited for that. Anna, which one are you most excited for? Probably In the Heights. Yeah. It looks amazing. I know I've seen some really good stuff from West Side Story, too, but I'm yeah. excited for In the Heights. We were talking about this on the way on the way in, actually. It's, I think, with, specifically with In the Heights, I think they're using the medium of film to their advantage. Um <clears throat> With certain songs, you, you can't do a whole lot on the stage, you know, as far as big, grandiose things, um, which can be used to your advantage um, on stage, on Broadway. Um, you can use your limitations to your advantage, but with the medium of film, you can do so much with, you know, with the budget and extras and so much more. So the from what we've seen on the trailers, it's still not out yet. It's coming out this summer, and it's been pushed because of the pandemic, it was going to come out summer of 2020, and now it's being pushed to now, <laughs> pretty much. So, and, and so, yeah, you can do so much more with the medium of film, like the, one of the big songs, 96,000, that's in the show. It's done <clears throat> on the streets of, you know, Washington Heights, and they, it's a cast of about 20 people, I think, and... It looks great. It looks awesome on stage, you know, obviously it won the Tony and all that. But to see it now, it's like you are in the trailers and the clips we've seen. It's like they're doing it in a pool in New York, which is like such like a cool throwback to like, you know, the old fashioned um, movie musicals of the girls just diving in, <laughs> which is, you know. So fun to see, but it, that kind of stuff is exciting. You know, you're able to do a whole dance sequence in a pool. You're able to have two characters dance off 
up the side of a, you know, the one of the buildings in the, in the up, up the fire escape. They're able to dance up the side of it and use these uh, movie techniques that they've used um, to their advantage, which I think is awesome. Um, what would, did you have a lot of movie musicals growing up that you always went back to? Not musicals, two movies, but movie musicals. Yeah. Yeah. Sound of Music and like mm-hmm. Mary Poppins and all those. Yeah. Although that did. That did come from a That musical. did come first. But, <laughs> but, you know, our, not our generation, but anyone who grew up with that movie afterwards. Yeah. After it came out, it's just like you saw the movie of Sound of Music first and then you saw a production of it. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> it's kind of funny because a lot of people will have seen the movie of In the Heights first before yeah. they've seen the produ- a production of it, which is awesome. So we've seen on Broadway, too, that a lot of movies have gone to Broadway. Mm-hmm. You see Mean Girls. You see um, TV shows like Spongebob go to Broadway. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think... What, what, which ones do you admire the most? What do you think really got it as far as, like, using the theater medium to its, its advantage? Well, I really appreciated Spongebob. But yeah. That's, that's also nostalgic to me, but I really love the music of it. Yeah. Um, but some of them, like Mean Girls... Like you were saying, how does it really add to this standalone production of because Mean Girls was so iconic, you mm-hmm. know, just immediately. Yeah. Iconic the movie. movie. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. movie. And then to bring it into this different light, which the way they did it was pretty cool. But um, I think people knowing that movie for what it is and then going and seeing. Like it's so the popular musical. that you can't just not exactly. help but think about it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, where something is like. Like SpongeBob, it's like it's it's so different compared mm-hmm. to like what you think it's going to be. Yeah, going you think it's going to be mascots and yeah. At least with that TV show, like they were able to use the characters for yeah. the story, mm-hmm. but instead of just having it based on the one story that a movie is, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Totally. I got it. Hold on. Hello. Yeah, Hollywood. You want us to be in your next movie musical? Sign me up. Okay, done. <laughs> so all that to be said, we're excited for all the movies and movie musicals that are coming out uh, in the Heights, Dear Evan Hansen, all the fun ones. It's going to be a, a good time to be back in the theater. Um, so we are going to take it over to um, a Zoom interview we had with uh, always incredible Miss uh, Jenea Jones. She is an actor, um, performer. She has worked for so many um different companies and productions. Um, she is the best. I'm going to take it over to Tyler. Thank you, Tyler. Oh my gosh, you guys, I have such an exciting guest on uh, for us today. Uh, she's an actress, performer, gamer, streamer. Um, she has performed uh, all over California um, in Old Globe, SDMT, Moonlight, uh, Lamps Players, Rockwell. Um, she's part of the Swingin' series. Um, she's worked for Disney and she is part of Pixel Playhouse. She's done it all, folks. Always talented and wonderful, Miss Janaya Jones. Hi, everyone. <laughs> so good to have you. We're excited to have you here. Um, we met um, 10, 84 years ago at AMDA. Uh-huh. Um, it was like a lifetime ago. Um, I'm so excited for just everything I've seen you done over these years and just so thankful to have known you and you're the best. So we're going we're gonna to do some. No, you're the best. No, oh, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to. I'm going to uno reverse that. <laughs> I love getting to see you at like any time that you pop up, whether it's like on social media or like at an AMDA alumni panel. I'm like, I know him. That's my friend. <laughs> so um, the first question I have for you, um, because like I said, you've, you've, you've done your rounds. You've been, ar- you've been around for a while. You've done many a show. So um, when it comes to shows or new projects you're work- working towards, um, what do you gravitate towards? What, what sparks your interest when you're looking at new stuff to work on? What, when, it, when it either comes to character or the show or the topic, what, what excites you? Ooh, that's really, okay, we're just diving right in, aren't we? Going uh, in, we're going hard. <laughs> it's mostly I gravitate towards spaces. I like gravitating towards spaces where I feel comfortable. I like feeling uh, that I can personally create my own translation of the character in collaboration with the creative team, of course, but just having that sense of freedom in a way to not be afraid to make choices, not be afraid to tell the story in my own, in my own book. 
Um, so I like to gravitate towards places where they give me the allowance to do at least a little bit of that. Because yeah. I feel like there are some places and some, you know, some theaters, some locations and stuff that will be like, this is exactly what I want. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to take you over this way. Yeah. And also, <laughs> you know, like work, working for the number one corporate machine, you yeah. know, it's <laughs> like you have to be in this number at this time, at this mm -hmm. place. So you, you lose a little bit of that authentic storytelling. So it's like, I want to have a little bit more creative freedom on top of just like being able to say, okay, I'm going to step with my left foot this time, not with my right foot, right. <laughs> you know? And that's okay. We're, and that's okay. I'm, we're pushing I'm not boundaries gonna here, but. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've, I've asked people this question before, so I kind of mix it up a bit. The, you know, how did you discover theater question? But for you, I, th I figured out, I figured I'd ask, uh, what was your first experience with the musical Rent? <laughs> <laughs> not this. <laughs> my, that's a lot of enough, our gateway musical theater drug. So. That is the gateway drug for musical theater. Yes. Oh. My, my, my gateway for Rent was the movie, actually. The one that came out in 06. And I watched Rent shortly after watching Memoirs of a Geisha. Talk about a movie night. And <laughs> I... Uh, both of the movies were phenomenal. I was like, I want to be everything that Mimi is. Have never played her. Will probably never play her. And that's okay. But uh, that was the first time that I was ever like, oh, okay, this is a gem gem. I'm a big fan. And I had watched musicals before and stuff like that. And at that point, I knew I wanted to be in musical theater. I was just like, hmm, this is really interesting. Like, yeah. I really like that they're able to put musicals on film. You know, so hopefully that will be in the future. Flash forward to now. Oh, <laughs> so I've never done any production of Rent. I've never seen any production of Rent, but I've done Take Me or Leave Me God knows how many times. <laughs> that um, always seems like the, the one uh, soundtrack we always bump in the car in high school for musical theater. Yes. So. Uh-huh. You're waiting for the ding, ding. <laughs> Ding, ding, ding. Your carpool goes, so we, aww. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then we okay. drive off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, what was your go-to? Um, you're, you're in high school. You're a musical theater nerd. You, you bump in your, your mix CD. What, is, what musical theater songs are on there? What's your go-to musical theater jams? And when I was in high school, my two musicals, this is truly how chaotic I am as a person, was... <laughs> Wicked, Stephen Schwartz is Wicked, which will always be my favorite musical of all Never time. Heard of that. I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's an indie one. You know, well, I'll, we'll talk about it later. One. We can get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and it. then Next to Normal was my wave back in high school. That I saw it in 2010 on Broadway. Oh, um, man. With Dame Alice Ripley, may she rest in peace, and also her beautiful husband, Jason Daniel Lee. So wow. they were in it together. Oh, and cool. I was not like, I wasn't a huge musical theater nerd in high school. Like I was kind of all over the place. I didn't know where, where to be when mm -hmm. I was in high school. Yeah. But my friend Cole was like, you have to check out this musical. Like when we go to New York, I really think that everybody should watch it. And like, you know, that'll be the one that we spend the big bucks on. And so mm -hmm. once I read the story for it, I listened to a couple songs. And I was like, this sounds like the jam for me. And from then on, from watching it at the theater to now being an almost 30 year old woman, I will never stop bumping that musical. And it always just like warps me back to sitting in that theater and watching literal legends make this musical happen and create stories and casually drop a kitchen glove on the floor and make it work, you know? What is a musical you wish were, was produced for? What's an underrated one? Everything. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Where do I even start with that one? Where yeah. do I even start with that one? There's so many. Well, it's because you know how it goes here in Southern California. Everyone's on the same wave because it's cheaper to do the same musical always because you can purchase the same set and you can kind of collaborate with other theaters on that. So I think a lot of the bigger theaters in town are like, let's do Mamma Mia or let's do Hunchback, which if we're talking honesty here, I want Hunchback to be produced all the time, everywhere. Like, it, Hunchback. <laughs> right, yeah. oh, well, pull my ear. Uh. Yeah. Like, that is my favorite musical of all time. I'm lucky enough to have done it. I'm lucky enough to have seen it twice. It, it is getting done, but it's little by little. But one that I feel like doesn't get done as often, but I feel like I've aged out of, is Heathers. 
Mm. I wanted to be in Heather so badly. I wanted to be Broadway's yeah. Alice Lee more than anything in the entire world. <laughs> like uh, her just giving me all of the, um, I always forget the Heathers. They're all Heather, Heather Duke, Heather Chandler, Heather McNamara. McNamara, yes. I want to be Heather McNamara oh and my. scream my face off always. The Wild Party is one, like Andrew Lippa's Wild Party is one that doesn't get done very often. And that mm -hmm. one needs a whole resurgence. I need all of it to happen. <laughs> and I feel like there was one more that's like on the tip of my tongue. It'll, my ADHD brain will shout it out in the middle of this a little later, but- It'll be at the end time. when we- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's just gonna be like, flower drum song, that's yeah. the one. <laughs> <laughs> flower drum song, <laughs> done. Oh, I also forgot to mention, um, what um fairy tale broke you uh walked out of before you came in <laughs> um because <laughs> can we explain to the audience where we're where we're coming from here <laughs> yes we are coming at you live from the fairy brook of twitch.tv tyler had mentioned before i'm a gamer and a streamer and i i stream video games on Twitch, but I also stream makeup. So I do get ready with me's every week and I have my viewers pick my looks for me. So this week it was the fairy cottage core type. Like I had the little elf ears on a little earlier, but I took them off cause I didn't want to look too bananas. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like you know, this, honestly, now looking at it in camera, like in zoom, it looks like a normal look that I would put on on a day to day. I'm glad that that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know now, like, you can walk outside a grocery store, you're like, feeling it. Exactly. I would wipe off the fun. lipstick, you know, because I don't want to get lipstick on my mask. But other than that... Like, That's right. Would... Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, yes, like I mentioned, you've worked for theater and theme parks. Um, I wanted to know your biggest or favorite difference between performing on stage versus performing on theme parks, because it's, it's very different, like, audience interactions sometimes so that's fun. yes oh absolutely working at disney i've worked in so many different scenarios when it comes to audience participation and audience interaction mm -hmm. um that i think it's a good one to compare just the three shows that i do there yeah so being at frozen is like the epitome of being in a musical anywhere right you're on the stage you don't really get to interact with anybody there are huge ice spikes. So if anyone were to come up, they would have probably gotten hurt. You can see the audience and they can see you to an extent. But like once I get up those stairs, I can't see anyone. I'm not worried about them. I'm worried about my, um, I'm worried about my castmates. I'm worried about making sure I'm listening to the music mm -hmm. because in that show we don't have in-ears. So we can't like, you, you can hear only so well. It's either, it's either you're getting it blared in your ear or you can't hear it at all. So you have to just... <laughs> Trust the Lord on that one. Um, <laughs> exactly. Uh, being with Five and Dime, which I am very biased. It is my favorite one to do. Um, Five and Dime, you're outdoors. You get to kind of, you get to put your own little flair on it. And for me, I'm the like, the jumping bean. I like to jump around. I like to dance with people. I like to give people high fives. I like to just like be, kind of be in everybody's faces. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we have a... Uh, a tape mark right that will mm -hmm. kind of show where we are allowed to be and where the audience is allowed to be Stage but barrier, I feel like right? yeah. correct and mm -hmm. so I feel like with my shows is when people cross that line too much <laughs> because they're like <laughs> I want to play like I ended up having to dance yeah, I had to like dance a kid off stage once because I was like, ah, I feel bad, but they knew I could handle it because it's right. happened to me so many times. Being in Disney Junior Dance Party is kind of a combination of the two because mm -hmm. we're on stage at, um, for most of the show. We have interactions with face characters and stuff like that. So we get to hang out with like Timon, Vampirina, Doc McStuffins. Yeah. So we have to be in certain places at certain times just to make sure that our face character friends have the proper space so that we don't bonk into them or they don't hit a wall or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then as far as audience interaction, there are times where we'll get down from the stage and into the audience, into the cesspool of children, and they'll get to play like on my iPad, they'll get to like start snowstorms and start like, um, one of the other things, bubbles and like all of that fun stuff, but it's for a definitely younger audience than most shows. They'll be all over it. They'll like wipe their snotty hand and then they'll just slap the iPad and you're like, 
there's hand sanitizer backstage, right? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> it's almost like improv, I've discovered, where you just have to be mm -hmm. like ready for anything. Did you ever have experience with improv? I think all of my improv I learned from working at Disney Junior Dance Party, working yeah. at Five and Dime, or working at Rockwell. Because mm -hmm. so many things happen at Rockwell where like you just have to be on your toes always. Mm -hmm. Like you know, if someone falls and totally eats it, or if a waiter is standing in your spotlight, or if somebody misses their entrance because they're all the way upstairs and forgot to come back down, like lights go out or something. Like there's so yeah. many things that have happened at the Rock Bowl specifically yeah. that you like are in mastermind training for improv. <laughs> so. yeah. For those of you who don't know, Rockwell Table and Stage was this amazing haven for us in LA, just like, you know, dinner theater, all of us could come to when we were kids still in Amda and stuff like that. And a lot of us performed there afterwards. I love that place. I miss it. So, Me yeah. too. Rip. Rip to Rockwell, by the way. Pour one out for yeah. Rockwell. Yeah. That leads me to what was like your most like fulfilling experience for you as a performer, whether in theme parks or in Rockwell or in a show, just like what was the most, the moment where you were like, this is why I do what I do. I'll give you two answers because the obvious answer of course is me playing Esmeralda, right? Esmeralda has been my full-blown aesthetic since 1996 when the movie came out. You know, like, <laughs> it, it was one of those things where, like, when I, when I saw Esmeralda on the screen, I was the ripe age of three. And I was like, this is what I want to be when I grow up. I want to be this fiery, incredible, confident spitfire of a woman mm -hmm. that can literally stomp on, this, on these disgusting men. And... <laughs> Perfect. I was like, this is what I need. This is what I need. So uh, growing up, I would always watch the movie and everything like that. When I found out what it, was, it was a musical, I'm like, oh, it's time. It's time. <laughs> I made it. <laughs> I finally made it. And it took me a while to get there. I had a lot of <laughs> sad nights of me crying into my pillow when I didn't get the right. part and blah, blah, blah. But yeah. when it happened at the moonlight, it was everything I wanted and more. It was the perfect cast. It was the perfect... That location is peer inducing. That was oh my god! It was it was wild, and what being having my mom be able to be there and watch it, like that was the the biggest full circle moment for me. Uh -huh. Pretty much anything where my mom is involved is where I'm like, yep, this is how I know this is what I want to do. Because <laughs> the the turn of that was when my family came to see Elsa. Um, oh, awesome. I was never expecting it would happen because they live in San Francisco, but it's still a long moment for them and like they have to make a whole weekend out of it and all that kind of stuff but they were finally able to come see and my mom was there and i literally like, as i was on the stairs and they were coming across the way i like looked down a little bit and saw my mom just weeping <laughs> oh, <laughs> and i was like mom look at us we're making history <laughs> i did it <laughs> yeah i'm the second black elsa and the first pacific islander elsa let's go hey! <laughs> it's always those moments where like i get to share what i love with my family because they have been so supportive in this absolutely bananas job that i chose to do and mm -hmm. constantly be in a variety of emotions about <laughs> right. like yeah, yeah, yeah. I just like had a bad cry about theater this morning but the day before i was like okay i'm feeling hopeful so right see you got esmeralda and then i still gotta wait for when they add the gargoyles back in and then maybe i'll have my chance um, <laughs> <we'll get there. laughs> uh, <laughs> um the funny thing is i like i am i am that b that will be like I want that show to be just the core five, right? And then like yeah. three gargoyles. I don't need, we don't, we don't need a whole choir, right? We just right. need the fun, like Jason Alexander and yeah. all of them. To I'm be... losing to a bird, yeah. <laughs> exactly, I need the humor back. I need the humor yeah. because Clopin can tell the whole story. That's his whole job, right? Yeah. He doesn't need an army of gargoyles to tell him what's happening in the story. He's the one that is recounting the story in the first place. So if Alan Menken, if you're listening. Alan Menken, Stephen Schwartz, if you're listening, yeah. I have thoughts, so give me a call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, love your work. Uh, <laughs> yeah, also obsessed with you both. <laughs> yeah. Is that your favorite Disney movie? Is Hunchback? Yes. If I had a, if I had a consolation prize, it would probably be like Treasure Planet or um Whoa. <laughs> or uh Goofy Movie. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What's classics? Your- but yeah, tra- Treasure Planet, right? <laughs> yeah, I was like, because there, there, there's that whole that that whole series of Treasure Planet, Atlantis, Emperor's New Groove, like that's the ones I distinctly remember owning. But you know. This one's be- oh yeah, the Atlantis, the Lost Empire is the reason my boyfriend looks the way he does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, go to karaoke song. Oh God. Um, for the longest time, it was Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody because mm. mm-hmm. classic. Also, we stand Whitney Houston in this house. But I- there are a lot of karaoke bars now that say do not sing Whitney Houston. Like you can't. They have a lot. There's a lot of rules now in karaoke. Where it's like you can't sing Whitney Houston, you can't uh, you can't do Disney songs, you can't do really? one more that looked really really strange when I saw it. Oh my God, I can't remember. But there's this whole list, right? Oh, I think it's Mariah Carey or something like that. Because they don't realize that like singers like us will go into karaoke bars just like have a good night. It's it's not one of those things where we feel like we're doing work. You know, right, it's more right. to, to celebrate. It's just to have fun or whatever. So totally. I don't think people get it. But I also do, um, what is that song? Let's Hear It For The Boy. That's my- Oh, that's my yes. I love the boys. That's a great one. <laughs> this was one. What's your uh, favorite animated sequel? And if it's not Shrek 2, I'm gonna be upset. Um, Ooh. <laughs> so that's a direct answer. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, anime, I mean, honestly, Shrek 2, Shrek 2 is the right answer to that question. I don't think there's any other answer to that question. I'm trying to think. That's my favorite. There's nothing that like instantly pops into my head because I have a lot of beef with a lot of animated sequels. Really? Yes. I have big beef with Pocahontas 2. Pocahontas 2 can meet me in the streets. I was so mad at that film. Oh, I feel like my only backup would be Aladdin. See, both of them. Oh, really? Like both of them? Yes. Return of Jafar? Yes, there's Return of Jafar and then there's King of Thieves, right? Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So both of those I had, I was a big fan of, yeah. but yeah, Pocahontas too, meet me in the streets. And also I think Cinderella's I didn't like, I hated all the Beauty of the Beast sequels, like <laughs> Little Mermaid 2, boo, like all of it was, all of it was busted. So it's like, you crazy can't... sister. It's my favorite. Right. It's like, <laughs> how, how, how did you ruin this so bad? Also, don't even get me started on Hunchback of Notre Dame 2. There shouldn't be a 2. <laughs> Oh, she's beautiful be- on the inside. No, oh, my- get up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, get out. Uh, your favorite quote or lyric from a musical that you think about or use on the daily? I don't need a life that's normal. Way too <laughs> far away. But something next to normal would be okay. Yes, yeah, something next to normal. That thing hey. I'd like to show. <laughs> <laughs> just keep singing always that's the uh, that, that at that the end. lives rent free in my head oh, wow. um because you know just literally every year right every year you think it's gonna be a great year and then it ends up turning into garbage for some reason right mm-hmm. remember when we all thought 2019 was bad and now here we are now we made so it. it was one of those things like if i could find something that feels like normal to me mm-hmm. i will i will live through all of it you know, so like my normal now is playing Final Fantasy 14 online with my boyfriend. And, and that's it. That's all you need. Uh-huh. That truly is. And the fact <laughs> that Spectrum did me dirty and turned off my Wi-Fi, I'm calling the cops. I'm calling them. <laughs> Is that your favorite musical? Next to normal? Next to normal? Uh, I would say Wicked is my favorite musical for obvious reasons. Yeah. But Next to Normal takes a hard second for mm-hmm. sure. Is there a least favorite musical in there? Oh God, I've got a handful. Um, <laughs> We're killing darlings here. Yeah, right. And basically it's like, it's the ones, it's all the like, it is the musicals that we have to have, right? It's the mm. golden age musicals. I'm not, uh, my vocal type doesn't fit in that category. So I have a lot of beef with a lot of them and also just, like based off the time and everything too, there was a lot of all of the bad things. I think my least favorite musical, and you're gonna laugh when I say this, is How to Succeed in Business Without Religion. Whoa! That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> there, it's me uh, being in that musical though, like what? <laughs> I wonder like what's, what musical has come 
come the closest to being actual rock. I mean, yeah. American Idiot got pretty close. Yeah. But I was gonna say it's Hedwig. Still, it's one of those. Hedwig, yeah, Hedwig's a good one. Yeah. I would consider Next to Normal a rock musical. Yeah. Um, I feel like everything else is like just on the fine line of like, yeah, it's musical theater, but also like there's an the electric guitar in the band, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was that your go-to, like growing up, that kind of that kind of sound? Well, yeah, I was I was what, you know, we call the black sheep of the family, where I was not like anybody else in my family. All of my family listened to top 40 pop and rap and stuff like that and hip hop. And I was the one listening to like screamo and heavy metal and alternative music and stuff like that. And I still bump that to this day. Once I moved into musical theater, it added like a little extra spice anytime that someone said a rock musical i was like oh wait hold on what does that mean <laughs> wait a minute yeah yeah and everyone in college was like girl no you're not <laughs> gonna do rock musicals and then i'm like well here i am b so get used All to right. it what's something in your in your experience as an actor as a performer what's something in your field that you really wanted and then made happen by you just either, you know, just asking for it or making it happen. Like what's something you were like, I'm going for it, it's gonna happen, hooker by crook. Oh, you know what? I think I think what is one of those things that like I had I had to make it happen be, and it's literally the reason why I can call myself a professional actress now in life mm. was leaving New York City. Mm, I, I think that was the moment because I I was very lost out there. I was far too young to be out there. I was like far too inexperienced to be out there. And I had a lot of people uh, supporting me and saying like, you know, you can make it, you just have to wait. And I was like, well, how about I just build my resume up? What a concept, right? And there were folks that did not agree with that sentiment. They were more of uh, like along the lines of, uh, we'll just keep going to auditions, but I didn't have time. I was working a full-time job. So it was like, I didn't have the right time slot. I was always working midday, which is every musical theater person in New York's nightmare. Yeah. Because midday is like when the callbacks happen and all of that stuff. So yeah. like the fact that I could kind of maybe make it to the open call and then never get a callback appointment because I had work was a crock of crap. Yeah. So having the the courage to leave new york and get out of there and kind of start my life over again um was the moment where i was like i'm going to make this happen come hell or high water because if it doesn't happen then i know that this is not for me right but if it does happen then i know that literally it doesn't matter how far down in the dumps that i am i can make anything happen so um, yeah, that was a huge one because it was a huge, uh, it was a huge shift in my career, kind of like flipped everything upside down because I had a couple things under my belt, but it wasn't anything, um, I mean, special to me, but it wasn't anything special to like Broadway. And they were like, okay, and then what else, you know? Yeah, well, that's what most people like who aren't in this industry don't get. It's like, you think, you know, I'm just going to go to New York and go to Broadway and that's going to be it. And it's like, it's nope. it's, you know, it's just like any job you got to build up your resume and you know work at it and you know if you're not getting work in a certain place then you know what do you do you you, you would exactly walk. and and one thing that i know breaks a lot of people's hearts but we just have to keep saying it to folks new york is not for everybody mm -hmm. it is one of those things there's theater literally everywhere yeah. so i think people have to kind of get used to the dialogue that you can do what you want to do in pretty much every state. Well, um, so if it's something that like New York is too expensive for you or California is too expensive for you, or if you just don't like living in either one of those places, there's Seattle, there's Chicago, there's Florida, there's mm -hmm. Atlanta, there's all of these different places that you can go to and whether they're close to your home or not. Uh, there's Hawaii, like members of my family yeah. run the Hawaiian theater circuit. So it's, <laughs> like, there are so many wonderful opportunities for people nationwide and also internationally as well that you can still make musical theater your thing so you yeah. don't have to be on broadway broadway is not the end goal if anything right. make sydney your end goal because sydney is really figuring it out over there and i'm trying to go oh, over there gosh. right now yes they're doing great um yeah, yeah. that's and and you know that's the thing too it's like people see 
the Tonys and they see the shows on television, they're like, they think that's it. It's like, there is a whole other world, you know, and that, and that's why we called it in the round. Cause we we're given yep. a fully well-rounded idea of all this. Um, you know, <laughs> you kind of, you kind of talk, touched on this. Um, what has this last year and change or so um, taught you or reminded you about being a performer? Funnily enough, I, I just talked to, um, Michael about this earlier today. I was like, I love how being an actor is easier than living in a pandemic. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, absolutely. It is a hundred percent unlivable being in a pandemic, right? We're everyone is barely hanging on by a thread. Um, but what it's taught me is that we we as actors are the most adaptable people we are the most like yes and people we are the most um like f around and find out kind of people to where we will just make stuff happen no matter what mm-hmm. and that I, I that's the thing i love about actors and i always call us very scrappy because no matter what we'll be in we'll be in the streets doing a musical if we need to you know like or you know we'll create virtual things which is what we've kind of had to shift to over the past year mm-hmm. and although it's it's starting to get to that point where you're like mm, i don't want to do it anymore i just want to perform again and it's it's at that we're so close we can taste it like part yeah now that everyone's getting vaccinated and everything like that i'm like ah we're so close we can we can do theater soon (laughs) um it's it's becoming like a slow climb where Mm -hmm. we're like okay let's just get everybody else on board and then we're almost there (laughs) at least the people yeah yeah at least the people we're performing with and working with everybody else shoo shoo you know (laughs) um but yeah it's it's one of those things that it's been very hard just kind of like allowing myself to be a human Mm -hmm. because when I like pre pandemic, I was working from 5.00 AM to 10 PM every single day. So it will be 5.00 AM, wake up, take a shower, go to the pole studio, do my, um, my work study there. Then I would leave at around eight ish, drive up to Disney, do Disney from 9.30 to 6, go back to the full studio and either take class or cover someone at the desk, close the studio, go home, fall asleep and do it again the next day. And then depending on, you know, what other things came in my way, like if it was pool studio then disney then i had to leave disney early like because i was only doing a half day because i had to go to the rockwell and do a show or i had to go and do xyz or whatever like i was always doing something yeah and when the literally the weekend of the pandemic hit i got super sick Mm. still don't know to this day if it was covid i don't think it was i think it was like a swollen tonsil issue Mm -hmm. um and it was only for 48 hours i was in and out and then after that i would fall asleep for like 14 hours straight each day because my body was just trying to catch up yeah for real. and michael was so concerned he was like is she alive or yeah. <laughs> totally. like did i just lose my girlfriend and like <laughs> just just when i just when i got her back you know like now right, right. she started and he was on show hiatus at the time it was like yeah uh-oh <laughs> the time. that's why people say it's like if you if you feel like you could do anything else do it because this is going to be work but it's going to uh-huh. be worth it if you really want it you know exactly well that's the thing like we've we've been talking a lot with a lot of friends about um folks who have had to move out of like california proper or new york proper to like just go home and a lot of them have kind of not necessarily given up on the dream but just like have kind of started over in their lives and what i said earlier have taken a shift in their life it's the next chapter right so they're deciding that like maybe musical theater is not for them and they want to do something else and in turn most of them end up thriving in whatever they do because again yeah. musical theater people are scrappy they will make it happen so it doesn't matter what we are doing whether it is an office job whether it is a theme park job that's not entertainment or whether it's tap dancing our faces off on Broadway, we will make it happen no matter what. Exactly. Naya, you are so inspiring to me as always. Um, Oh. Where where can people find you? Plug all your things. Uh, 
I will literally all of the things is one. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm, I have been able to create this alter ego of Esmeralda because now all of my social media is the exact same. So yeah. you can find me on literally every social media platform under Esmeralda with three H's underscore. Um, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Twitch. Um, and then I also have a makeup Instagram, which is where I, why I look like this. So you can find me on Esmeralda looks. So if you look up just the regular Esmeralda, it's the same exact thing. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty much always streaming. So that's, I would check there first to see if I'm alive. Every mm -hmm. other place, it'll be about a week. So <laughs> you're right. Exactly. Thank you so much for being on. You are the, you are amazing. And I love you. No, you're amazing. Thank Get you so much here. for having me. <laughs> of course. All right. I'm going to turn it back to you, Tyler. Thank you so much, Tyler. Awesome. Janae is the best and we love her so much. Um, you can follow her on her Instagram, like we said, and follow her on her Twitch. So, Anna, it's time for a game. It is. It's time for a game, you guys. <laughs> this is a game we like to call, What Are You Listening To? That's a really, again, name of the game, still pending. So, Anna, can you explain <laughs> to the audience what our game is about? Yes, we are going to play a few seconds of a song from a musical, and we are going to try and guess what that is. If we can't guess, we'll give a few more seconds and guess again. That's right. Okay, I'm going to start off, and we're going to go back and forth. So, this is a couple of seconds of a song you may or may not know. Here we go. ABBA. That is from... Mamma Mia. That's right. <laughs> Sorry you off with an easy one. Okay, your turn. Go for it. <laughs> oh. Is this um, Man La Mancha? Yes. Impossible Dream? Yes. Yay! Oh, my gosh. The, one, the show I've probably seen once, um, but it's so good. Um, okay, here we go. Ready? It's from last five years? Yes. I need like a second more for the title though. You know. Yes. Bum, it's bum, a little bum, dark bum. house and a little Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's why. <laughs> as long as I can do better than that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> All right. Go for it. You're next. Is this? <laughs> I'll give you ten seconds because that was hard to hear. <laughs> <laughs> was it Sunday in the Park? <laughs> I don't know. Here, hold on. I'll play it one more time for you. Okay. In life, one has to face a huge assortment. Oh, Aida. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I'm gonna try and give us a, a stumpy one. Here we go. Okay. Train and another bus and another hundred people. Yes, yeah, there we go. Another hundred people from? Company. Yes, written by... Sondheim? Yes, okay, Sondheim. <laughs> I'm like, is it someone other than Sondheim? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who does that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is like the country station or something. <laughs> um... Oh, Do you geez. need five more seconds? <laughs> yeah, give okay. me like when they come in. <laughs> Is it like Bonnie and Clyde? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> it's all, it also sounds like, it sounds like some smooth jazz listening. Like, <laughs> Is it, it could be like, not Pippin. No. It sounds like that's It's 60, contemporary. It's contemporary? Mm -hmm. Um Can you sing some of it? Because I had trouble. Here. Yeah. <laughs> my man, Christopher Sieber, if that helps. Flowers accept the rain and grow more beautiful. I have no idea. Babies accept their... <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie musical. It's the prom. Oh, okay. Was that in the movie? Yeah. It's I Andrew just Rannells. saw. I just saw the prom. 
Like I like I I didn't listen or watch. I didn't see. Oh, you didn't watch I the whole just thing. Saw the movie. Yeah, the movie. It's it's where they're in the truck, um, monster oh, truck rally. Okay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Amazing. It's the acceptance song. Yes. <laughs> movie musicals. How about yes. that? Ooh. Um. Let's see if you got this one. Who is he? Who is he with his marry me? <laughs> <laughs> Anna, you never fail me. Uh, good. That's good. Um, All right. You should get yeah. this one. Okay. Oh, uh, Book of Mormon? Yes. Salta Lake City. Good job. <laughs> I said it like in Italian. Salta Lake City. <laughs> Amazing. Um, this one, this one you definitely won't get, um, but I'm still going to do it anyway. Uh, it's a villain song in the show, but let's see if you get it. I swear, I knew. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> oh I love that. I love that show. I swear. Uh, <laughs> okay, go for it. Okay. Oh, it's fine, fine line. Avenue Q. Good job. One of my all-time favorites. <laughs> That's a gut wrenching song right there. Yeah. Um, okay. Here we go. I don't know. I'm going to play a little bit later on. Her. Nothing? No. Let's see. When does it get to? Is this like Phantom or something? It's close. Same writer, Angela Weber. Cats? <laughs> Oh my gosh. (laughs) Um, Let's do one more each. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Oh, it's Hades Town. There you go. All I've ever known. She's amazing. (laughs) She is. Uh, Eva. No, no Blizzada? Yes. Yeah. She's incredible. If you're watching this, like, (laughs) Okay, let's go on the show. Um, okay, let's see. I want to give you a good one. Let's see. Oh, this one's... Yeah, you'll probably get this one. I used to sing this song for auditions, and I sang it for competition and got to finals with it. Really? Yeah. Since you knew that one really well, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you one more. Okay. Um, that was pretty funny, by the way. Yeah. Um, I don't want to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's 96,000. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> in the Heights, we breathe. It's yes. breathe. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's another one of our well-named games called What Are You Listening To? Um, <laughs> so we are going to switch gears and do our artist spotlight. Um, the artist spotlight is where we um, highlight up-and-coming artists or uh, professional artists that are working in the industry right now, we are going to um, highlight a uh, San Diego-based band called Dive Vibe. Um, Got some pretty cool artists in that group. It is uh, Ryan, Michael, and Jack. They're the best. Go listen to their song right now. This is Dive Vibe. This is the last one we're going to be playing tonight. I didn't launch you into this new era of music. This one's called Glow Plug. It's going to take a little something to get the whole thing. Thank you. 
Incredible, ain't it? That was Dive Vibe. Thank you so much, Ryan, John, and Jack. You can follow them on Instagram and Facebook. They are Dive Vibe. D-I-V-E, V-I-B-E. Take the dive, feel the vibe with Dive Vibe. You guys, this has been such an awesome episode. Thank you so much for those who have uh, followed us already. Once again, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that subscribe button. Um, Anna, as always, thank you so much for being here. Of course. You're wonderful. Thank you. You guys, the arts have the ability to heal, and I think during this time, uh, we could use some of that, and we hope we can provide that to you. We hope we can provide a safe space to have fun, talk about musicals um, during this time. You guys are the best, and we love you. Once again, check out Verb Energy. They are pretty darn good. Click the link in our bio and you get $13 off your first purchase of samples. I've been Tyler. This is Anna. Would you like to say anything, Anna? See you later. <laughs> and we will see you around. Get it? Bye.